I want to talk to you about the evidence that you collected at your autopsy. Um, were Lake and Riley's fingernails clipped at autopsy? Yes, they were. And I put some gloves in front of you if you need them, okay. Dr. DeMarco. I'm sure you all know in case. And we're not going to open it, but uh, okay. we, we're going to open some other stuff, so you should do that too. Uh, States 319, do you recognize it? Do you recognize your unique case number? Is your name on it? Yes, it has my name as well as the unique case number, the county, and the name of, of, the, of Lake and Riley. And are those the fingernail clippings that you took at autopsy of Lake and Riley? Yes, these are the ones taken at autopsy. The state would like to admit 319. No objection. Did you perform a sexual assault kit on Lake and Riley? Yes. Tell me what you did. What was, what, it, what is that and how did you do it in this case? The sexual assault kit consists of collecting evidence samples. So we took swabs of the vagina as well as the anus. And then we also collected scalp hair. And at your autopsy and in your examination of Lake and Riley, uh, did you observe any signs of a completed sexual assault? I did not observe anything that would make me believe there was a sexual assault. She had no anogenital trauma. In addition, I'm sorry, to, I forgot to mention the sexual assault kit also includes a swab of the oral cavity. So states exhibit Green 24, do you recognize that? Yes. What is it? This is the envelope containing the sexual assault kit. And again, do you see your unique case number, your name, and Lake and Riley's name on that? Yes. State would move to admit states 324. No objection. 324 is admitted. Did you at autopsy, or was there at autopsy, a sample of Lake and Riley's DNA obtained during that procedure, during that process? Yes, we obtained two blood stain cards. Did you also, at autopsy, have uh, samples of Lake and Riley's hair collected? Yes. How, and what's that process like? Some of the scalp hair will be removed from the scalp, and when it's removed, you make sure that there's, you know, a, a, the root comes along with it. So a collection of scalp hair from different areas of the scalp is collected. Was her clothing also collected? Yes. And the vegetation that you observed in her hair when she arrived at your facility, was that also collected? Yes. And when I come up near you, what did you like? First, um, states 323, do you recognize it? Yes. What is it? This is a sample of the vegetative debris, so leaves and twigs taken from her hair. And again, do you see your unique case number and your name and the Lake and Riley's name? Yes. State would move to admit states 323. No objection. 323 is admitted. Did Lake and Riley have a hair tie with her hair or some hair in her hair? Yes. And was that collected as well? Yes. States Exhibit 326, can you tell us what that is? This is a evidence bag containing the black hair tie. And the state would move to admit states 326. No objection. 326 is admitted. And I want to move to her clothing. Let's start first with her shoes. States 322. Do you recognize 322? Yes. What is it? 
This is an evidence bag containing her sh athletic shoes. Same with the new state of 321, what is that? This is an evidence bag containing her underwear. State approved to admit states 321, no objection. States 325. This is an evidence bag containing her socks. State approved to admit states 325, no objection. It's 327. This is an evidence bag containing a piece of black fabric that appeared to be a bra strap. And the state would need to admit states 327. No objection. No objection. Dr. DeMarco, did you form an opinion as to the cause of death of Lake and Riley? I did. What is that opinion? Her cause of death is the combined effects of blunt force head trauma and asphyxia. What is her manner of death? Homicide. May I have one moment, Your Honor? Yes. I will pass the witness. May I just have a moment for my photos? Is hemorrhaging considered a subset of a cause of death, or is it, can it be its own cause of death? Blood loss. Is blood loss considered a subset of other causes of death, or can it be its own cause of death? So blood loss or exsanguination is not usually a word that we'll use for a cause of death. It's more so a mechanism of death. The cause would be the blunt force trauma that caused the, the hemorrhaging, if that makes sense. I think they're pretty intrinsically linked, but yes. Um, when I look at your report, and I just want to make sure we're looking at the same document. Do you have a six-page report in front of you? Yes. And the top says official report, and then it has the GBI sigil on it? Yes. When I look at your report, it has a section called case individuals. Did you fill that out? I did not. That is automatically populated with this case number? Yeah, it's just, <clears throat> excuse me, it is automatically populated by our, our LIM system, which is Laboratory Information Management System. Do you know who decides how to categorize these four individuals? I do not. And just for the record, is it true that it lists the uh, victim as Lake and Riley? Correct. The subject as Jose Antonio Ibarra? Correct. Elimination, Arjenius Ibarra? Yes. Elimination, Diego Jose Ibarra. Yes. Did you measure Lake and Riley's fingernails before they were clipped? I did not measure them, but I examined them. How would you describe the state of the fingernails before they were clipped? They were intact. They were not broken. Is it true that there was um, blood on the inside of the fingernails? I would have to refer to the, the photograph to see, but I know that there was soiling of the fingers, specifically blood. I would have to look at the photographs. In other words, you can remember that there were blood on the fingers, you just can't remember if they were underneath the fingernails? Mm -hmm. Okay. And that, is that a yes? Yes, question? sorry. Okay, you're good. The scratches on her torso, you'd agree with me that they're um, 
in a variety of lengths? Yes. There's also a, a little bit of variety of, of the width of these scratches. <clears throat> uh, a small amount, yes. And you were discussing with the state the possibility that they were brush abrasions. Can you explain what you mean by brush abrasions? So when we say brush abrasions, we're just giving a characterization to the, their appearance. So they have an appearance where there was some sort of movement across the surface. So for example, someone could get brush abrasions by, by, by dragging somebody across the surface. That's possible. And you can't eliminate the possibility that some of these scratches are brush abrasions. I can't entirely exclude it, but I don't favor that they are. Do you have an opinion as to whether these scratches could have been caused post-mortem? I do not think that they were post-mortem. And why not? These scratches showed something that we call a vital reaction. So when you see red discoloration in the area of the injury, that is an indication of bleeding. And you will not see bleeding into the tissues in a post-mortem injury. Does that differ depending on how close in time to the death that happens? Mm, no. So if somebody is deceased and then the next second there's a cut, wouldn't that also have bleeding associated with it because of the blood left in the body? So the bleeding that goes into the tissues is a effect of the, the heart pumping. So the heart needs to be pumping to have the pressure to push that blood into the tissues at the injury site. And so you're saying you didn't notice Yes. Okay. Just one moment. 